This is AQA A-Level Chemistry topic. It's year 13 kinetics, so it does follow on from the year 12 kinetics topic. Uh, goes into a lot more mathematics, a lot more calculation. So I'm going to recommend as you go through that you pause it, have a go at the activities first, make sure that you're happy that you understand what we're looking at rather than just listening. So within this part one video, we are going to look at what rate of reaction actually means. And there's going to be a lot here that recaps things that you hopefully already know from previous years. So we've got a little um, tip here. Remember that square brackets in, in the context of this will mean concentration in moles per decimeter cubed. Um, I know they're used in complexes as well, but in terms of calculations, it's really important that you remember that. So let's take a look here. We've got a diagram. We've got a couple of questions. Um, have a go at them. See how you do. <coughs> So we are looking here at the formation of hydrogen gas collected when we react magnesium with dilute hydrochloric acid. And then we have got a, we've got the graph, we've got the line of best fit, and we're going to carry on through this video looking at how we can actually use that data to, to measure rate of reaction. But to start off with, you were asked to state the meaning of the term rate of reaction. So what we're looking for here is that it is the rate of change. And it's the rate of change of concentration. That's a really important fact to maintain or to retain. Um, and it's the concentration of reactants or of products. The concentration of reactants will go down in a reaction and the concentration of products will go up. So you can see here that we're measuring the production of hydrogen. So it's concentration of products that we're using here to determine rate of reaction. Um, and it's over time, and that's really important when we get to the units a little later in this video. So what do we think has happened at point W on this graph? Well, what we can see here is that the volume of hydrogen has stopped going up. Essentially, the reaction has stopped. Why would it have stopped? Well, that's going to be because, not because all of the reagents have ran out, what you'll often find is that you have some reagents in excess. You can actually see here we have an excess of dilute hydrochloric acid. So here it's about the fact that the limiting reagent, in this case the magnesium, has all been used up. A couple more questions for you to have a look at here. And these really go back again to GCSE and year 12 work. So in terms of collision theory, why at a fixed temperature would the rate of reaction double when the concentration of hydrochloric acid doubles? So what we're looking for on this one is that essentially we've got double the number of particles in the same volume or in a set volume. That's what we mean by doubling the concentration. And if that's the case, we're doubling the frequency of collisions. And that's a really important word. I've highlighted there, as you can see. It's not just double the number of collisions. It's about doubling the frequency of collisions, the number of collisions per second. And if that's the case, we're also doubling the frequency of collisions where the energy is equal to or greater than the activation energy. And if that's the case, we've doubled the rate. And then down at the bottom here, in a study of the reaction in part A, a student referred to activation energy. What do we mean by that? Activation energy is the minimum energy required for a collision to result in a reaction. If the particles do not have activation energy, they will collide and bounce off without reacting. But if they have the activation energy, that collision will result in a reaction. So now let's move on and let's look at how we might measure a reaction rate. We've got an equation here. Um, we can see Br2 reacting with HCOOH, that's methanoic acid. We're making bromide ions, hydrogen ions and carbon dioxide. Uh, before we get into actually using that information, what would the units of rate be? Well, remember from the definition, we spoke about it being the rate of change of concentration over time. So let's start with that as our basis. The rate of change of concentration over time. Now we know that concentration is measured in moles per decimeter cubed and we know that time is measured in seconds. So concentration over time would be mole dm to the minus 3 over s but we put that into standard form and we get mole dm to the minus 3 s to the minus 1. 
Okay, I'm really going to recommend you actually get some graph paper and do this and then review it against the video. So I am shifting it onto here. I've got some graph paper. I'm going to do some plotting. I want to pick an appropriate scale so I can get 800 across like this with time. So I've got each small square is worth 20. And going up to 0 0.01, you can see I've got five big squares. So each big square can be 0 0.002. So I'm going to put that in as my scale. I've remembered to label my axes and I've put the units in. And then from there, I'm going to go through and I'm going to carefully plot my points. Now, once I've done that, I can do my curve of best fit. And I have done that. It actually took me about four attempts to do that and go back and do it again, because it is important you try to do it in that one sweeping motion. From there, what we want to do is work out the rate of reaction at 0 seconds, 300 seconds and 600 seconds. To do that, you need to find the gradient of the line at those times. And to work out the gradient, we need to do a tangent to the line at 0, at 300 and 600. So I've added those on here. So the tangent is essentially only touching the curve at 0, this one at 300 and this one at 600 seconds. And that then allows me to work out the gradient. Remember, that's changing Y over changing X. Changing Y is concentration. Changing X is time. So we're doing concentration over time. The gradient is going to be the rate of reaction. So at 0 seconds, you can see that it comes across to 230. It's 0 0.01 over 230. I get 4.35 by 10 to the minus 5 moles per decimeter cubed per second. At 300, you can see that it's going up to 0 0.067, going across here, following my scale. And down here, if I go from 0 to 660, that gives me a rate of reaction of 1.01 .01 by 10 to the minus 5 moles per decimeter cubed per second. And I do the same again at 600 seconds, and I find that my concentration is 5.85 by 10 to the minus 6 moles per decimeter cubed per second. And if I just highlight those, you can now see something really important. The rate of reaction is fastest at the beginning, and it slows down over time. And that's obviously because we are using up the reagents. So there are less, there's a lower frequency of collisions, a lower frequency of successful collisions, so the rate slows down. Eventually, when we run out of our limiting reagent, the reaction will stop. So that takes us to the end of part one of this series of videos on Year 13 Kinetics. Uh, thank you for listening and goodbye.